come from a musical family and my older sister and brother both played guitar and uh, my brother got a job as a volunteer at the 1963 Philadelphia Folk Festival and uh, I went to just the Saturday night concert at that festival and um, it was an amazing concert looking back on it. I mean, it was to me at the time, but I'd, I had no perspective to realize how amazing it was then. Uh, and among the many performers who were there that night, one was Mississippi John Hurd, who had just been rediscovered. And so I was really taken with him. I just thought he was great. And there was a little notice in the program of the Folk Festival telling you how you could uh, sent off a check and this record that he had just recorded on Piedmont Records uh, would be sent to you. So I, you know, put my money in the mail and sent off for the record and it came. And when it came, I just listened to it over and over. And I, John Hurt I, really inspired me and made me want to play guitar. So that's sort of how, what the impetus was. I can see no more All is reason I work at all Is to keep the wool from my door When my earthly trials are over Cast my body up in the sea Save all the undertaker's bills Let the mermaids flirt with me Sweetheart, I cannot find Only things I can call my own Is the trouble and the worried mind When my 
my earthly trials are over and cast my body up in the sea. Save all the undertaker's bills, let the mermaids flirt with me. I like and have been influenced by so many different country blues uh, performers. I recently have been really putting in a lot of work on Furry Lewis and Bo Carter and uh, Robert Wilkins, but I also, I think, probably have been very influenced by Mance Lipscomb, who I really loved. and. Uh, uh, Blind Lemon Jefferson, I love Blind Lemon, and uh, Blind Blake also I thought was terrific. So, and there's a lot of people who I, uh, whose music I really admire, but I don't have any illusions about being able to, to do it very well. <laughs> Furry Lewis, to me, is, he's kind of a sleeper in a way because he, he was such a good storyteller when you when you take like his version of Casey Jones which filled up two sides of a 78 or I will turn your money green or uh, you know bed bug blues or some of these blues that he did he, he his uh, his lyrics are so rich and he was really an entertaining guy too. Uh, when you see some of the videos made of him late in his life, he's still doing a lot of clowning when he plays and you know, playing the guitar with his elbow and, and doing all this kind of stuff. And I think that's probably a result of having played in a medicine show as a young man and you know, a tremendous emphasis is placed there on being an entertainer. But the thing that was really in kind of an ear opener for me was going back and listening to some of those early recordings like uh, Dryland Blues, uh, Mistreat Mama, Big Chief, and just sort of going, oh man, this is pretty formidable guitar playing. I mean, it, it's really varied and, and kind of high concept too. I mean, it's, it's difficult stuff and he's just absolutely ripping it off and playing it so great. If your heart ain't iron, it must be marble stone. If your heart ain't iron, it must be marble stone. Cause you're a mystery mama just as sure as you've been born. I can tell from a little just what a whole lot means. I can tell from a little just what a whole lot means. You treat me just like somebody you ain't never seen. I got 19 women, all I want's one more. I got 19 suits me gonna let the 19 go Bo Carter, I think the thing that probably appealed to me about Bo Carter in the first place was his tremendous harmonic richness in his playing. And 
uh, I sort of think when you think of, of, of folk artists, not necessarily bluesmen, but of whatever type, you have a lot of people who, whose sort of musical range is not wide, but it's very, very deep. And I would think of somebody like Skip James, perhaps, falling into that category. He was mostly that sound of playing in the open minor tuning. Uh, and he didn't vary all that much from that. But within that, you know, tremendous depth and complexity of expression. On the other hand, you have people like uh, Mance Lipscomb or Bo Carter or John Hurd or Reverend Gary Davis, who, whose range is very wide, can play guitar in a variety of different keys, seem to be comfortable, um, you know, negotiating songs in all these different keys and tunings. And I think that's one aspect of Bo that appealed to me, uh, was that sort of really interesting versatility that he had, and uh, really harmonically rich. He's, he does a lot more chordal stuff than most country blues guitarists did. Shove them on down. Well, must I keep dealing? Or must I shove them on down? Well, I done quit dealing. Woo, I got to shove them on down. Push you can pull, but don't you tear my clothes now? Must I deal? Or must I shove them on down? Well, I done quit dealing. Ooh, I got to shove them on down. Robert Wilkins, I really admire his sort of uh, intensity of concept and, and execution. Uh, he's a great writer. And in a certain way, you don't think of blues musicians as being writers. But Wilkins really was. He, uh, his pieces almost never conform to pre-existing formal conventions. He always, almost always, invents the form of his songs. Uh, and in fact, many of them sort of make so much sense, it's, it's almost hard to see why they didn't catch on, why, why other people didn't imitate them. Also, great lyricist, great singer, um, and uh, I love his sense of time. He has what I, what I think of as heavy time. It's not, it's not bouncy at all. It's just like, pow, it's just strong. It's deep time.
It looks like I can see trouble in the air. It looks like I can see trouble in the air. Just ain't trouble here, friends. It's trouble. I'd have listened to what my mother said. And I wish I'd have listened to what my mother said. And I would have been down, down in this trouble today. Well, the judge gonna sentence me, the clerk's gonna Six months on the road. Well, the judge gonna give me six months on the road. Well, then I can't stand it. Got in heaven, do you know it? I'm crazy for Lemon. I mean, I, I like so many people, but if for some stupid reason I had to choose one person out of the entire genre and was just told, this is the only person you're ever going to be able to hear again, the rest you will not be able to hear, I think I would choose Lemon. His singing just kills me. I just think he had the most beautiful voice. And you think of Bad Luck Blues, when he starts off his singing and he, and he says, I want to go home, but I ain't got sufficient clothes. And then he starts that second line, he just goes, ooh, you know, and he just hits it, and he just has this beautiful, clear tone to his voice, in addition to which, unbelievable guitar player. I mean, he's one of the, there's lots of great guitar players in the genre, but there aren't all that many who, could, who you could say really played with nuance. Lemon did. A lot of them are powerhouses, but Lemon just played with such a degree of, of nicety, which is surprising because supposedly he played on the street a lot. 
And usually people who play on the street a lot end up playing kind of crashy because they have to project. I love Mance's voice. Um, uh, I love his variety, um, you know, that'll do all kinds of blues uh, and, and pop songs and just old ditties, you know, songs like It Ain't Gonna Rain No More No More. It's just neat to hear that. And I think with, with Mance, one of the things that really appeals to me in Mance is just, you can just see and hear his intelligence in everything that he does. He's a kind of a good example of what a wonderful thing it is for an artist to have the luxury of a long life and with, you know, good enough health to continue to grow in the art because, um, he has a lot of pieces where his playing changes from beginning to end. And this is the LP era, you know, so the song might be five and a half minutes long. And he's not doing, you know, his one really nicely worked out thing over and over again. He's just, it's like thorough composed. I mean, he's, he's changing the entire time. And he's just an ocean of ideas. I mean, so many great ideas. 
So I really love Mance. I love his singing too. Real deep voice. I became interested in jazz, um, and you know, I was listening to the Django Reinhardt and Stefan Grappelli stuff, and then listening to horn players, uh, Coleman Hawkins, Lester Young. But then it, it was interesting because it didn't sort of go up through jazz chronologically. I missed a, a bunch of the, the great early stuff, but then I sort of skipped from Coleman Hawkins right to Eric Dolphy, who was really pretty far out. And I think one of the things I loved about Eric Dolphy was um, I didn't understand what he was doing, and so I just had to respond to it purely kind of viscerally or emotionally. and. Uh, and just sort of the pure sound aspect of it. And uh, I love that. But in terms of guitar, I guess I started figuring out a lot of jazz standards uh, by people, you know, George Gershwin, Cole Porter, Richard Rodgers, um, all, all of those kinds of uh, Tin Pan Alley composers from the first uh, four or five decades of the 20th century. Hey there, you with the stars in your eyes. Love never made a fool of you. You used to be too wise. Hey there, you on that high fine crowd. Though she's not tall, 
I'll start crying to you. You think someday she'll come to you? You better get her, her with her nose in the air. She's got you dancing on a string. Break it and she won't care. Why don't you take this advice that I offer you like a brother? Or are you not seeing things too clear? Are you too much in love to hear? Is it all going in one ear and out the other? you dancing on a string, break it and she won't care, why don't you take this advice I offer you like a brother, or are you not seeing things too clear, are you too much in love my dear?